Hare Krishna dear devotees and welcome to today's session. How are you doing? I pray that all is well with you and your family at this time. So we're moving on with our series of inspiration using Arjuna situation in life and we're trying to learn from it and we're seeing how Krishna is trying to remind him the foundation of the Aryan culture which is based on self-realization and spirituality. So today we're moving on to two verses 2.5 and 2.6 which is sharing a similar idea and as we see how Arjuna is going to move on in 2.7 to ask Krishna to be his disciple. Shishyaste Shadimam Tom Praparnam. Krishna, I want to be your Shishya, your disciple. Please instruct me. So, this is a huge turning point in Arjuna's challenge of dealing with the mind. And as we've been seeing over the past few days, it's not easy, but it's something that has to be done. And we're also going to see today how Arjuna's arguments come to an end as he realizes that it's futile to understand and take the part of the mind, understanding how the mind works. So let's have a look at this. 2.5 Bhagavad Gita Gurum ahatva himahanubhavan Shreyo bhoktum bhaik syam api haloke Hatvarta kamam stu gurun ihaiva Bhunji abhogan rudira pradigdhan. Translation It would be better to live in this world by begging than to live at the cost of the lives of great souls who are my teachers. So just see Arjuna's argument now, what he is seeing as great souls. You remember when we did the uh, first lecture, we discussed in 9.13, Mahatmanas tu maamparta daivim prakrita ashrita. In Krishna's opinion, what is a great soul? A Mahatma is one who takes shelter in the daivim prakriti. What is Arjuna's definition of a great soul? <laughs> so you see the contrast? And now we see Arjuna's definition of a great soul. What is greatness in his eyes is simply material greatness, simply based on the body. What is greatness in Krishna's eyes? One who takes shelter of the divine energy. Arjuna's definition, one who takes shelter of the material energy. <laughs> Just see the difference in, in comparing. See what he sees as great and see what Krishna sees as great. See what he calls as a Mahatma and see what Krishna calls as a Mahatma. So it's interesting how Arjuna starts here by saying Gurum Ahatva. So the emphasis on the word Gurun, that these are my Gurus. These people who are Drona and Bhima, they are Gurus. How can we kill them? So it's very interesting how he uses the word Gurun here in this verse in 2.6. And in the next verse, he says, Krishna, you be my Guru. That means there's a change, something has happened. Something has happened from Arjuna's conception of what was Guru. And in tomorrow's verse, when he takes shelter of Krishna, what is his concept of Guru now? Just in one verse, see the difference. That's why it's so significant that he takes Krishna as Guru in tomorrow's verse. And in today's verse, he's using the word Gurun Ahatva. So that means his concept of what is Guru has changed. Let's see how it has changed. So Arjuna's mind has just declared a position and he's saying, I'm not going to fight Krishna. So again, his consciousness, his energies, everything is focused on the body. So on a bodily level, he's going to break all these dharmas. He's going to break respect. He's going to kill elders. So to his logic, it's better he runs away because he can't understand why Krishna can't relate to what he's saying. He's speaking dharma. But Krishna is not understanding his level of dharma. <laughs> so what, why is it that Krishna can't appreciate that he's trying to do good, that he's actually speaking dharma? So we must remember his mind has become so strong because it's part of his job description. He's a soldier. And as a soldier, he never expected that one day in fighting for dharma as a soldier, as a kshatriya, that he will have to fight against his own people. 
So on the level of the mind, he's trying to avoid that. And therefore, Krishna is saying, Arjuna, understand yourself. Get to understand yourself. You're only relating now on the level of the body. There's so many deeper dimensions to you. I'm relating to you on the level of the soul, but you relating to me on the level of the body. Therefore, you're not understanding what I'm trying to say to you. So Prabhupada is explaining this point that it's worthy, but only on the bodily platform. Prabhupada gives an example that if your teachers are following our dharma, they misguided and misguiding others. Then now you are saying you're still respecting them when they are following our dharma. Then how can you be following dharma then? <laughs> so you see the nature of the mind, it doesn't want to give in. So it's using all the techniques and tactics that it can. And now it's using this tactic of dharma. But it's just because it's based on duality. Because the reasoning is based on duality and not on scripture, on spiritual realization. Therefore, it's imperfect logic and therefore he's going in a loop. And Krishna is not buying that. Krishna can see right through that. Because he's saying, you are following Drona, which is the teacher. And he stands for knowledge and information. And in terms of the pandemic that we are now, it means the TV, the media, our, all our sources of information that we're getting about the, about the virus. So if that, if the source of information is incorrect, that means what we're understanding will be incorrect. Just like currently we've heard this uh, tablet called uh, Invermectum that's coming from Japan. And so many doctors are saying this is so good, it's working. And as soon as you get to South Africa, they banned it. <laughs> so what's happening now? Is there some other agenda? And then we see in the pipeline, they've received so many vaccinations from India and they've ordered vaccinations. So if this tablet is going to work, that means all the money they spent on vaccinations and things like that will be futile. So you're trusting their knowledge, but you are trusting Dronacharya. You're trusting their knowledge. You're trusting their culture, but you're trusting Bhishma Dev, which is sold out to that level of information on the mind. We know the history of Drona. He's, they have their own intentions. Bhishma Dev needed financial help. That's why he took shelter of Duryodhan. And Dronacharya taught the Pandava boys and all those young boys because he wanted to get back at Dropada. So he also had his hidden agenda, which is now manifesting. So they may be respectable to somebody who's naive. And Arjuna's mind is very naive right now. So to him, it's, they are respectable. But what is their agenda? Did you study it well? So you're going to assess from what level? From the level of the mind. And if you're going to assess them from the level of the mind, then you can see the fallibility of what they are. So what's the lesson here as the Aryan culture? The lesson is that we've got to be very careful that we appreciate the teacher, but we follow the process. We appreciate the teacher, but we follow the principle, the process of life. Because if we get attached to the teacher, then that is more like a hero worship. That is more like a fan. Because if that person becomes fallible and has difficulty, then you're going to give up your whole practice. But if you took shelter of the process, using the inspiration of the teacher, then you, you still got something to fall back on. And we see that many times teachers do have difficulty. They're not able to continue with their service as a teacher. But those devotees who are strong means they took shelter of the process. Although both are needed, but the process is the foundation. And that is why also we take Shiksha Gurus. We have many inspiring people. Because if somehow our Diksha teacher, our Diksha Guru has some difficulty, we have others to be inspired by to help us on the process to move on. So the big lesson is also what financial arrangements are you making based on the pandemic and its effects? Don't be like Bhishma Dev taking shelter of Duryodhan, expecting permanent shelter. If we have financial, if we're going through financial difficulties and financial challenges, don't base it completely on the pandemic. Understand Krishna is there. Hmm? Krishna is Lakshmi Sahasra Satasam Brahma Sevyamanam Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Bajame. 
we are only familiar with one Lakshmi, the consort of Vishnu in this material world. But in Golok Vrindavan, Lakshmi Sahasra, thousands of Lakshmis are there and they are all serving Krishna. So if Krishna is on your chariot, if Krishna is with you, Lakshmi is definitely also there. Have that faith. You know, by the study, we really seeing the mind for what it is. That we're so attached of being appreciated as a good person. That we'll do anything. And if anybody acknowledges us, we don't even see the defects of what can happen by just following the person. Then if the person has trouble, then we'll also have trouble. But the mind simply wants appreciation, acknowledgement. And because somebody knows the technique of that, we see that in the world today, people are very, uh, first thing they flatter one and then we get, oh, this person likes me, this person accepts me. Because we're so insecure of who we are that we need flattery to be accepted. And once we accept it, and if we accept the person and not the process, if that person gets deviated, what happens to us? This is a similar thing of what's happening to Arjuna right now. He's attached to the person of Drona. He's attached to the person of Bhishma. And he's not, and, but he's talking Dharma. <laughs> but he's talking Dharma. He's saying, oh, you know, this is Dharmic to respect and all of that. But see what his Dharma is based on, only the bodily level. But Krishna is speaking Dharma from the level of the soul. So we have to be very careful how the mind manipulates us and how much we trust the mind and what it is suggesting. So we see that the most pain we can feel is mental pain. When the mind is paining, when the mind is suffering from anxiety, from stress, from trauma, this is the most pain. But what is the result of that pain, devotees? That result of that pain is memory. We are suffering our memory. Most of the time the event is already over. But we are recycling the memory of that event. And again and again we go there and we recycle the pain. And feel the pain again and feel the anger and the resentment again and again. So this is what the mind is. Because we have decided to follow the mind, see Arjuna's conclusion now. He's realizing that and look at how he's substantiating. He's saying, I know they're wrong, but they are superiors, man. <laughs> he's saying, I know they're wrong, but they are seniors. They are my seniors. So if they are your seniors and they're doing wrong, then you, you're going to encourage that? <laughs> So the lesson is be careful what we get attached to. Part of the nature of the mind is to get attached. But it's meant to get attached to Krishna. But due to charismatic people being around and due to people who take the leadership role as seniors, we get attached to the person and we forget the process. This is very, very important because if we do that, when the person has problem or when the person is deviating, now we, we're stuck because we've chose the person and we've not chose the process. And this is our situation here. We're taking shelter of what news we're getting in the pandemic. We really don't know what's the underlying feature. We don't know what was even the cause of the pandemic. And we're taking shelter of everything the news is throwing at us and getting completely disturbed. And not taking shelter of Krishna in any way. We're just doing our, we're just doing our needful, our 16 rounds, a little bit of service, a little bit of reading. And therefore, now when we need to apply the process to life as a practical application, we're having difficulty. It's challenging us and it's scaring us. Why? Because it's proof we've taken shelter of the person. We've taken shelter of the media. We've taken shelter of the news. And we haven't taken shelter of Krishna. So let's see what Prabhupada says here. So Arjuna goes on. Even though desiring worldly gain, they are superiors. So to balance this on the, on the Aryan path, the path of spiritual realization, we have the concept of Acharya. That one should lead by example, not lead by precept. Hmm? Lead by example. So if you follow an Acharya, then that person is leading by example. 
But if the person is only talking lip service, like the media is doing, like the news is doing, like, like we're taking information to heart all from the outside, then we're going to be misled. So we need to follow an acharya. Because by nature of the mind, it wants to follow someone. It wants to look up to someone. And Arjuna is using these examples. But in his heart, he knows that these are bad examples. That's why he's justifying it by saying, even though they misbehaved, but they are senior. Hmm? Can you see his logic? That's not logic. We accept Acharya, one who leads by example. If you're preaching a certain thing, then you lead by the example of that. That is what we should follow. So Arjuna goes on. He says, if they are killed, everything we enjoy will be tainted with blood. So he's saying this is death. Ultimately, how can you enjoy the death of someone else? Is that the culture you're asking me to encourage, Krishna? This is the recalcitrant mind we were talking about yesterday. How it can take a simple point and turn it around and make you look bad. Be careful of the manipulation of the mind. So Prabhupada says in the purport, According to scriptural code, a teacher who engages in an abominable action has lost his sense of discrimination, is fit to be abandoned. So we can see that when we judge by the basis of the mind, we're leading ourselves to be manipulated by others because everybody has an agenda. If they're following the mind and they're not following Krishna, they have a separate agenda. And they're simply trying to fit you into their agenda to manipulate you, to use you as a puppet in their schemes. And this is what Drona and Bhishma has done to Arjuna. And unfortunately, Arjuna could not see it. And Krishna is on his chariot, but see who he's looking at. He's looking at Drona, he's looking at Bhishma. He's completely forgotten that Krishna is right there with him on the chariot. So this is what the mind does. It completely distracts us and takes us away from Krishna. And it makes us believe that we're doing the right thing. We're doing the dharmic thing. But it has a hidden agenda. Why? It doesn't want to succumb to the surrender of Krishna. It doesn't want to be controlled. And therefore it misleads us, it misdirects us. And it manipulates the innocence of a person. So Prabhupada goes on to say here, Bhishma and Drona were obliged to take the side of Duryodhan because of his financial assistance. So you see, they had a hidden motive. And they simply used Arjuna to achieve that hidden motive. Therefore, we have to be very careful how we take shelter and how we surrender. Prabhupada goes on to say, Although they should not have accepted such a position simply on financial consideration, under the circumstances they had lost the respectability of teachers. So you see, if we're going to take shelter of the media, we don't know what the hidden agenda is. And what if they're manipulating us? And many times they do. They are filtering what we hear. So what they're telling us is what we believe. So if you believe the pandemic and everything that's going around the pandemic completely, you're going to have trouble. And that's what's happening to most of us. So I say filter it out. We're looking for the Acharya. We're looking for the one who's, who leads by example. So Prabhupada goes on to say, but Arjuna thinks that nevertheless they remain his superiors. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is very dangerous and this is what the mind does. This is proof that we are practicing only from the mental level, which means our Krishna consciousness is only on the bodily level. So we have to be very careful of that. That is called Kanista Bhakta. And symptoms of Kanista are there in Nectar of Devotion. How the Kanista Bhakta behaves. He only sees the Lord in the temple. He doesn't respect other devotees. He doesn't acknowledge other devotees. It's only him and the Lord. It's only the temple. These kind of symptoms show that your Krishna consciousness is very myopic. We have to be broader than that and understand deeper than that. Prabhupada goes on to say, and therefore to enjoy material profits after killing them would mean to enjoy spoils tainted with blood. 
So you see Arjuna's because he's following the mind, he's only seeing short term. He's only seeing what are the results right now. Krishna is trying to give him prayas, not shreyas. Shreyas is short term. Krishna is trying to give him long term understanding. And that can only be built on the spiritual platform, Aryans. So Prabhupada goes on to say. So we move on to verse number six and the translation. Nor do we know which is better, conquering them or being conquered by them. <laughs> so you see Arjuna, all of a sudden it's we now. He says, oh, nor do we know. Krishna knows. But now Arjuna is, oh, his mind has become so soft hearted. It's become all inclusive. <laughs> he just manipulated Krishna. He just chastised Krishna. And now he's saying, oh, but we, you know, now it includes you also in the problem. <laughs> see the mind devotees, just see how the mind is working here. Let's see what Prabhupada says. If we kill the sons of Dhritarashtra, we should not care to live. Yet they are now standing before us on the battlefield. So you can see Arjuna's perception is only what he can see. He's judging everything, he's running his life simply from what he can see. And that is dangerous, pratyaksha. He only what he sees is what he understands. He doesn't want to consult any form of spirituality. To him, reality is what he sees. Prabhupada says in the purport, Arjuna did not know whether he should fight and risk unnecessary violence although fighting is the duty of the Kshatriyas, or whether he should refrain and live by begging, if he did not conquer the enemy. So see, Arjuna is confused. And this is where Krishna now sees that, he senses that, and now he's going to encourage Arjuna to become a disciple and hear from Krishna. So this is the change we've been waiting for. And this is the foundation of the verse that comes tomorrow. So let's see what Prabhupada says in the purport. Nor was there certainty in victory because either side might emerge victorious. So we always want certainty in life, especially, especially from the level of the mind. It, ex it expects that what the eyes are telling it is certainty. And everybody wants certainty because it's comfortable, right? Nobody wants uncertainty. But how do you grow if there's no uncertainty? How will you know where your threshold is? How do you know how much you can achieve if you don't explore the unknown? That's why Prabhupada says the only thing that is certain in life is death. <laughs> yeah, that's the only certainty. One, one reporter asked Prabhupada one time, what do you think about the death rate in some Middle Eastern country? And Prabhupada said the death rate is same everywhere. 100%. <laughs> this is the fact. This is what the Aryan culture is understanding and is teaching. It's understanding and teaching the process of life. So Prabhupada goes on here. Even if victory awaited them and their cause was justified, still if the sons of Dhritarashtra died in battle, it would be very difficult to live in their absence. So here Arjuna is talking about attachment. So we've seen because he got attached to Drona and he got attached to Bhishma. So by that attachment, he's even supporting their views, even though they're doing wrong. They are dharmic. So this is what attachment does. And now he's saying again, because of my attachment to them as my family members, how can I enjoy knowing I kill them? So this is what misdirected attachment can do. Attachment in itself is very natural. But attachment to Krishna, this is where we want to dovetail our attachment. So Prabhupada goes on to say, Under the circumstances, that would be another kind of defeat for them. Because you attach by sentiment, the mind has pulled you by emotions. Remember yesterday we discussed the emotional level of the mind. So in that way, maybe physically you have won, but emotionally you will be defeated. And this is the nature of the mind. It's always based and playing with emotions. And that's why it disturbs you so much. Prabhupada goes on to say, This desire to live by begging, although he was born in a royal household, is another sign of detachment. So this is a great virtue because anybody who practices the Aryan path, 
the path of Krishna consciousness or self-realization, is a virtuous person. But just see Arjuna's defect. He's showing sympathy. He's showing detachment. But he's showing detachment being attached to Drona and being attached to Bhishma. So he, he is attached to something and therefore he's showing detachment on this level. So what is he achieving? Your virtue is not virtuous. Vishaya vinivartante nirharascha dehinam rasovarja rasopyasya param dristam nivartate. In order to achieve the higher taste, param dristam, you must give up the lower taste. So is he attached to the right thing? He's still using the mind to justify his attachment and just see how he's being trapped. Although Krishna is right there, he's not taking shelter of Krishna. He's still taking shelter of his mind and he's consoling himself that just see how detached I am. But he's not saying how attached he is to Drona and to Bhishma. So what is the value of your detachment when you are attached there? It's futile. This is what the mind can do, devotees. Let's see. He was truly virtuous as these qualities combined with his faith in the words of the instructions of Sri Krishna, his spiritual master, indicate. So we see here now he's talking about Krishna as his guru. That means finally, 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 the mind has stopped fighting. It has realized it's being defeated by logic. It's defeated by its reasoning. It's realized it's circular arguments. It's going around and around, making no sense at all. So finally it realizes, no, let me hear from Krishna. So this is the good thing about the mind as well. It also finally gives up its fight. And it does, when, and it does take shelter under the intelligence. And the intelligence is directed by Krishna, as we're going to see in tomorrow's verse. Prabhupada says toward the end of the purport here, it is concluded that Arjuna was quite fit for liberation. So see now the concept is of liberation. That in order to transcend the mind, you have to attach it to something transcendental, liberation. Prabhupada ends, he says here, Un unless the senses are controlled, there is no chance of elevation to the platform of knowledge. So if you're only going to listen to your mind, that means your senses are not going to be controlled. And then there is no such thing as knowledge. You won't have genuine, perfect knowledge. Why? Because you're listening to, because you're listening to the mind and the mind is getting information from the external outside world. Prabhupada concludes, And without knowledge and devotion, there is no chance of liberation. So you see, he concludes with the he concludes with the idea of devotion and that means you need a spiritual teacher. And that's where we catch tomorrow's verse where finally Arjuna's mind now approaches Krishna and says, I want to be your disciple. So thank you very much. Please join us tomorrow. And my personal details are as follows. Please let me know if there's anything I can do to personally help you. Hare Krishna.